Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Claire Dern Guinness, and I'm here today to talk to you about TypeScript. And what what is it? What is TypeScript? <laughs> um, so I'm first. I'm going to explain a little bit, like what it is. Then I'd like to talk to you about why you might want to use it, convince you or not. Um, and then I have some code examples to kind of show some of the features that I think are pretty cool. Um, so TypeScript, it's a free and open source language. It's developed and maintained by Microsoft. Um, and here's the definition from the website. It's a typed superset of JavaScript that com compiles to plain JavaScript. So what does that mean? Those are words, but what do they mean? Um, so let's start with the superset part of the, de the definition. Uh, here's a diagram to help explain what a superset is. Um, so you can see the yellow circle is ES5 JavaScript, and then even more than that is ES6 JavaScript, and then even more than that is TypeScript. So anything that you write using ES5 syntax is also valid in ES6. Similarly, anything that you write in ES6 is valid TypeScript. So in other words, all valid JavaScript is also valid TypeScript. So here's a function that you might recognize from the final week of our foundations course um, to create a haiku. It's just regular JavaScript but it can also be used as TypeScript. Um, all you would need to do is change the file extension from JS to TS, and then you have a TypeScript file. Um, you also have to install TypeScript. Um, it's available as a Node.js package that you can install through NPM, um, and then there's a command line compiler um, that you can run. And outputs a JavaScript file that you can use anywhere. Um, so a little bit more about the compilation part. Um, unlike regular JavaScript, you can't use TypeScript as is and just expect the browser or the server to like know what you want to do with it. Um, it has to first be compiled, and the compiler transforms it into JavaScript. Um, and technically, um, it's transpiling because it's compiling from one high-level language to another high-level language. Um, and what does it mean that TypeScript is typed? Um, it uh, has optional static typing, which means that you can optionally declare the type of variables, arguments, properties, etc., so that type errors will be caught during compilation instead of at runtime. So as we know, JavaScript is dynamically typed, which means that a type is associated with each value rather than with each expression. For example, you can declare a variable with a number value and later reassign that variable to a string, and JavaScript doesn't care. Um, in TypeScript, it, it may or may not care, um, and we'll see kind of some examples later. Um, also, as a, co a consequence of the lack of static types, type errors will only be found at runtime, and because of type coercion, you might not get an error at all. Um, and here's an example of finding an error at runtime. Um, so this is a fairly familiar site to many of us. We run our code thinking like everything's groovy, it's going to be awesome, and then we get an error. Uh, like, ugh, okay, so what does this mean? Concat is not a function. Huh, well, I'm pretty sure that arrays have a concat method, so why am I getting this error? It's not exactly a helpful message. Like, yes, yes it is. It is a function. Why are you telling me this? Um, in comparison, in TypeScript, we find these errors at compile time when we run the compiler on the command line with just TSC and the file name. 
and the error message is a bit more descriptive. So here it says, property concat does not exist on type number. Huh, okay, so even though my variable is called r2, it must not be an array, it must actually be a number. Okay, that makes sense. Um, also, if you use uh, Visual Studio Code, which is a free open source code editor, which is also developed by Microsoft, you can get some helpful red squigglies as you code, which might look familiar to you if you ever use Microsoft Office Word. <laughs> uh, you get the red squigglies when there's a problem. Um, you can then hover over the red squigglies and some information, which is hopefully useful to you, will pop up and tell you what the problem is. So here you can see I have two arrays. One is actually an array. The second one, I guess I forgot the brackets and it's just a number. So then when I try to call concat off of it, numbers don't have the concat method, does not exist on type number. So, oh, okay. Um, so here I didn't declare types, but TypeScript can do some inference and say, okay, that's clearly a number. Um, in this example, I actually did declare the types. So I say my first variable array is number brackets, so it means it's an array of numbers, and my second one is also an array of numbers, but again, I made that mistake, and here it will say type number is not assignable to type array of numbers. So more useful than just, ah, there's a type error. Do something. This tells you a little bit more about what you should do. Um, here are the TypeScript design goals, which are taken from the TypeScript wiki, which is available on GitHub. So yeah, the code is open source. You can look at it on GitHub. You can like make issues and you know kind of suggestions for features that you'd like to see, which is pretty cool. Um, so they're interesting to see by themselves, but they're also a good segue into why you might want to use TypeScript, TypeScript yourself. Um, so the top two, I think, are the most appealing reasons. So it's, you can statically identify um, constructs that are likely to be errors, like type errors. Um, and it also helps to provide a structuring mechanism for larger pieces of code. So if you have a huge code base with you know, tens of hundreds of developers all working on it, it can get a little out of hand if it's just JavaScript with TypeScript. It gives you a little bit more structure and ways to annotate your code to um, help others know what you're trying to do when you write that function. Um, and then the third one, align with current and future ECMAScript proposals. The um, team behind TypeScript are uh, looking at what ahead to what's coming down the pipeline so you can be sure you're always using the latest features of JavaScript and features that might you know be coming they're not even implemented yet but they are planned for so that's pretty cool <coughs> So yeah like I said uh, some good reasons to use TypeScript they have features that help you document what your code is supposed to do this will help your future self um, and it will also help other um, developers understand what you're trying to do and it makes your code more discoverable. You don't have to um, say, please refer to my API documentation to figure out how to use this function. You can do some type annotations and some inline comments and it'll um, kind of explain itself, um, which is nice. Uh, you can also, if you're using other people's JavaScript libraries, you can use declaration files to make existing APIs and libraries more explorable. Um, there's an online community that writes these declaration files and you can just import them and use them in your code and it'll tell you like, more about how to use it without having to go to the other thing. Um, yeah, avoid common mistakes like typos and give greater structure to your code with classes and modules. Um, yeah, so you can use JS doc, which normally allows you to write co inline comments and then it will create an HTML document uh, with all of your uh, comments. With TypeScript, JS doc comments will appear in the editor when you are using a function. 
Um, I'll show that a little bit later so you don't have to go to a separate page. Um, declaration files, um, you can use these to uh, import these when you're using existing libraries. You don't have to go to another website. Um, kind of did this out of order. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, classes. Um, this is also an ES6, but TypeScript um, helps to create even more understandable code with type annotations. Um, so JavaScript, as we know, is a prototype-based, uh, prototypal uses prototypal inheritance instead of class inheritance, but um, ES6 introduces the class keyword, which uh, helps, is, it's a syntactically more understandable way to deal with inheritance. Um, so it, look, it just looks nicer. Um, and then modules are also in ES6. Uh, TypeScript just adds even more um, information with them. OK, let's see some code examples. Oop. Oop. OK, so first of all, um, see a little bit what I mean by types. So this is a JavaScript file. It's just a regular JavaScript file. I can open open it up in the browser and I'll see I'm getting an answer for what is the distance between two points. So it's working. That's great. And if I come over here, I can just rename this file to TS. <coughs> now it's a TypeScript file, as easy as that. Um, but I don't have any of the static typing features. So it's still really just JavaScript, I'm not doing anything special. So if I um, make a mistake, like instead of passing this a zero or a number, which is what it wants, I give it an A. Um, it's not going to tell me anything is wrong because I haven't declared the types. Um, so, if I actually do declare the types, which is pretty easy, you just say, you do a colon, a space, and say, I want this to be a number. Now, I get the red squiggle. Aha! A red squiggle. Argument of type string is not assignable to parameter of type number. So, TypeScript is helping me out there. And then I can do that with all of these. And you know, this is a pretty basic example, but you can imagine if you wrote this function several, several years ago and you're like, I don't know what this is doing, this is going to be helpful to you. So you can hover over and it says, here's the function, it takes four numbers. So that's going to be pretty helpful. Um, <coughs> So yeah, we don't have to tell the function, we don't have to tell TypeScript what it returns. It can kind of infer. So if I hover over, the second line is what type it returns. And the reason that it knows that it's returning a number is because the uh, only thing that it's returning is math.square root. Um, and TypeScript has the entire JavaScript API um, statically typed and it knows all about what the JavaScript, bas the basic JavaScript functions do. So here I hover over math, it says, oh, it's an intrinsic object that provides basic mathematics. That's pretty cool. Square root, returns the square root of a number. So number, number. So I don't have to tell it it returns a number, it already knows that, which is pretty cool. So now if I try to run this, now that it knows that this is supposed to be a, uh, number, oops, I'm going to try and compile, pull, pull it up here, uh, where is it, oh there it is, okay, so there's my file types.ts and I want to compile just by saying tsc, types.ts 
Okay, and it gives me an error. Argument of type string is not assignable to parameter of type number. Boo. It does still compile, though. Here's my JavaScript file that it just spat out. So I did have an error. It's still giving me the file, though. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And just one more thing I want to show you guys. Um, so what I was talking about before, um, it helps make APIs more discoverable. You don't have to keep going back to the documentation. Um, here's a uh, external JavaScript library called Moment, and it helps you deal with uh, dates. And so I'm just going to turn this into a TypeScript file. Okay, and I have this um, declaration file that a kind man named Michael made, um, and it basically gives you the structure of the entire API, so I don't have to look all this stuff up. It's already here. Um, I just need to, oops. Uh, require it in, sort of. So I can tell it, here's the declaration file. Please use this thing. And now it knows. OK, moment. It has 13 overloads. That sounds cool. Tomorrow, moment, OK. Add. So it has all this information that I can now discover just by hovering over these, these methods. So it oh, say, mutates the original moment by adding time. That sounds pretty cool. OK, so now if I want to you know, start using this, I want to make two days from today. You can say moment. And then here's all the methods that moment has. I don't have to go online and look up what they all are, because they're all here. And it tells me what do they take and what do they return. So that's pretty cool. I'm just going to use add again, though. And now it tells me that it takes a string, the unit of time. So again, I don't have to look this up. It's right there. I'll just say days. And now it's telling me the second argument is a number. So I want two. So yeah, it's way easier than going online. I can just see it all right in my editor. Um, and yeah, this is Visual Studio Code, which is very helpful. And that's about all I have time for. There's way more. Um, but you can go online and check it out yourself. Um, this website is pretty cool. This is the TypeScript website. You can see um, on the left-hand side, uh, this is TypeScript. And then you can see what it outputs in JavaScript. And you can play around with it on this website. So you can see using inheritance, animal, which we might be familiar with from mammals. Um, and yeah, it's pretty cool. So thanks, guys. That's all.